Welcome to Reflecting Light. This podcast is about feeling the world with light by exploring myth, ancient texts, scripture, great works of world literature, and the works of artists, past and present, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. And now, here is your host, Mandy Green. Hello and welcome to Reflecting Light. It's our second week of 2024. I hope you're all doing so well in the new year. One of my favorite poets, Ruth Kay, said, And now we welcome the new year full of things that have never been. And in that vein, I'd like to invite any of you who want to travel with me on our tour or our pilgrimage through France in the footsteps of Mary Magdalene. It's this April, and we're going to cut off the enrollment in the next two weeks. So if you're serious about going, this is the last time I will be doing this tour. So if you want to do this tour, this is your moment. So for more information, please visit ForbiddenAdventure.com. I'd love to have you join me. Also, come follow me. We're starting a new year. So if you'd like to sign up for those weekly lessons, it's $10 a month and you can sign up at projectillumination.com. I will put both of those links in our show notes. And today, Mary Magdalene is a passion project for me. And today's subject has something to do with that. So to start off with, my word for the year I usually have a word for the year, and sometimes it coincides with the color of the year, the Pantone color of the year, which, by the way, is mint julep, kind of this minty green. I'm not sure it does, but the word for the year is affection. I wanted to talk about why I chose this word and what the roots of this word mean to me and invite you to think about how it weighs in in your own life. Now, affection comes from Middle English, affection, meaning a capacity for feeling, emotion, desire, or love. It's borrowed from Anglo-French, which has the same meaning, desire, love, inclination, partiality. That's really where it shows up. Its first use was in the 14th century. Now, in Greek, in our New Testament, Paul uses the word philostorgos. It gets translated as affection or the lack of affection. A philostorgos. A, if you put an A in front of a Greek verb, it negates it. It makes it the opposite. So people without affection and people with affection. And philostorgos in Greek means philos, someone who you have this bond with a brotherly, friendly love, a natural love, a family love, or someone who's a lover of family, a special affection shared between members of a family, or even God's family. So it's this very loving, tied to devotion, to being part of the family, the human family, or part of a place, a time, a family, a group. And the reason I chose this word was I read an article from the National Endowment for the Humanities by Wendell E. Berry. He gave the Jefferson Lecture in 2012. And Wendell Berry is someone who is very committed to agrarian practices to small towns, to small farms, and uh, argues that this largeness we've produced, this industrialism, this obsession with numbers, actually isn't helping us at all, that we lose our affection as we get involved with numbers. And I've been thinking about that so much as, you know, as I think about who I am and what I'd like to be and what I'd like to do in this world, there's an analytical side of that where people are saying, you've got to grow, you've got to expand. And all of, while all of that is true, 
it's important that we never lose. Well, maybe it's not true. That's for you to decide, but it's important that we recognize the importance of developing and loving and caring and tending for the places we are planted and the people we are planted with. In his lecture, he's going to reference Ian Forster's novel, Howard's End, which was published in 1910, as this argument for affection. In one part of the book, it quotes this, because a thing is going strong now, it need not go strong forever, Margaret said. This craze for motion has only set in during the last hundred years. It may be followed by a civilization that won't be a movement because it will rest upon the earth. And so in this sense, I'm using this word as a way to really dig my roots and my processes to nurture, to water, to tend, to cultivate, just like Adam and Eve were invited to guard and keep avad and shomer. It actually means to keep watch over and to serve, to cultivate Uh, the space that I'm in, my family, this podcast, my learning but in the most intimate ways, to be really present in my neighborhood, to be present in my home, to be present in my classes, to be making an investment in even my home, my land, to cultivate, maybe I could grow something, maybe I could harvest a tomato. I have have a black thumb. So we'll, we'll stay tuned for that. But Affection means that I'm engaged, that I'm involved, that I'm not looking beyond, that I'm simply present and focusing on how I can cultivate where heaven has planted me. And so to continue on, I want to quote some excerpts from his lecture. The term imagination and what I take it to be Its truest sense refers to a mental faculty that some people have used and thought about with the utmost seriousness. The sense of the verb to imagine contains the full richness of the verb to see. To imagine is to see most clearly, familiarly, and understandingly with the eyes, but also to see inwardly with the mind's eye. It is to see not passively, but with the force of vision and even with visionary force. I will say from my own belief and experience that imagination thrives on contact, on tangible connection. For humans to have a responsible relationship to the world, they must imagine their places in it. To have a place, to live and belong in a place, To live from a place without destroying it, we must imagine it. By imagination, we see it illuminated by its own unique character and our love for it. By imagination, we recognize with sympathy the fellow members, human and non-human, with whom we share our place. By that local experience, we see the need to grant a sort of preemptive sympathy to all the fellow members, the neighbors with whom we share the world. As imagination enables sympathy, sympathy enables affection. And it is in affection that we find the possibility of a neighborly, kind, and conserving economy. But the risk, I think, is only that affection is personal. If it is not personal, it is nothing. The word affection and the terms of value that cluster around it, love, care, sympathy, mercy, forbearance, respect, reverence, have histories and meanings that raise the issue of worth. We should, as our culture has warned us over and over again, 
give our affection to things that are true, just, and beautiful. And then he goes on to speak about his own grandfather who almost lost his farm and that many farms were in economic hardship. And it was actually James Duke, who was the man with this monopoly over tobacco there in the South. And when Wendell Berry went to Duke University, the school I attend, he saw this picture of James Duke, who really has used his wealth to have this university, and I benefit from his vision. But at the same time, he, Wendell Berry is arguing that affection is going to look at the minute as well as the macro. And that in today's industrialized world, we just deal with these huge figures and these huge sums that really don't affect us. Now, that's the other definition of affection is that it has an effect on us. It's something that affects us in the verb sense. And interestingly enough, if you tweak the word just a little bit, affectation means a false sense of love or a false pretense of love. And so the line there is actually quite sophisticated, isn't it? And he says that we've really got to come back to affection rather than dealing in these massive, massive quantities because we really aren't affected by them. In one aspect, he said, to hear of a thousand deaths in war is terrible. And we know that it is. But as it registers in our hearts, it is not more terrible than one death fully imagined. The economic hardship of one farm family, if they are our neighbors, affects us more painfully than pages of statistics on the decline of the farm population. We need not wait as we are doing to be taught the absolute value of land and of land health by hunger and disease. Affection can teach us, and soon enough, if we grant appropriate standing for affection. For this, we must look to the stickers who love the life they have made and the place they have made it in. He talks about boomers and stickers. So a boomer is someone who's just looking to magnify everything and make money off of it. And the stickers are the ones who are content to cultivate and really care for the place that they are in. And again, he's going to quote the character Margaret in E.M. Forster's novel, Howard's End, who's arguing against rural decay. And her premise, as she puts it to Henry, is the balance point of the whole book. And he quotes, it all turns on affection now. Affection, don't you see? Close quote. And he continues on. To have beautiful buildings, for example, people obviously must want them to be beautiful and know how to make them beautiful. But evidently, they also must love the places where the buildings are to be built. And one part here that has really given me pause that I think about is this. Is it the vice of a vulgar mind to be thrilled by bigness, to think that a thousand square miles are a thousand times more wonderful than one square mile. That is not imagination. No, it kills it. Your universities. Oh yes, you have learned men who collect facts and facts and empires of facts. But which of them will rekindle the light within? The light within, I think, means affection. Affection as motive and guide. Knowledge without affection leads us astray every time. Affection leads, by way of good work, to authentic hope. It all turns on affection. And he concludes with this thought. Forrester's interest throughout is in soul-sustaining habitations, 
houses, households, earthly places where lives can be made and loved. In defense of such dwellings, he uses, without irony or apology, the vocabulary that I have depended on in this talk. Truth, nature, imagination, affection, love, hope, beauty, joy. Those words are hard to keep still within definitions. They make the dictionary hum like a beehive. But in such words, in their resonance within their histories and their associations with one another, we find our indispensable humanity, without which we are lost and in danger. Well, my friends, affection is putting those roots in. Affection is recognizing where we've been planted and how we've been planted and the tremendous care that can be taken in our times and places. Now he speaks of it specifically in terms of farming and taking care of the land and being tied to the land because the land is how you survive Up until the last, I would say, 100, 150 years, most of the world was agrarian. But even in our spiritual lives, in our human relationships, in all of our stewardships, can we cultivate affection? Can we use these terms of love and beauty and truth and everything that brings hope and imagination, what we feel in nature, can we bring this all to bear in our own times and places and situations? I am going to take on this challenge for the new year. I'll check in periodically with you to say how it's going, but this is my word. I have it up in several places in my home and in my studies, and I can't help but reflect on the sentiment that says, let the affections of your heart be placed on God forever. It's that same sentiment that speaks to an investment, to planting, to putting your roots in, to not always be looking out for the latest, greatest, or multiplication, but maybe it's more about division. Maybe it's more about being still. Maybe it's more about cultivating and planting and harvesting and learning and adapting to all the things that are in our direct stewardship and part of what we love and hold so closely. This authentic light that we hope to kindle here and in the eternities. My friends, I doubt that we will, that these skills and this particular ability will be lost in the eternities. It would seem to me that the very eternities are founded on our heavenly parents' affections for us and for this world and for eternal progression and for all of the things set up to teach us about love and light and truth and hope and joy. May you find your word and may whatever you choose to do this year be absolutely laced and tied into the affections of your heart that are virtuous, lovely, and of good report. Have a great week. Wishing you all love and light. Thank you for joining us for Reflecting Light with Mandy Green. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave a good rating and share it with your friends. And remember, your light makes the world a brighter place. Share it.